Over the weekend, teaching at a rate increase, Federal Reserve Vice Chairman Stanley Fisher said, quote, we are close to our targets. Looking ahead, I expect GDP growth to pick up. Fisher sounds optimistic about the economy, but our next guest, Peter Schiff, founder of Euro Pacific Capital, has a much darker projection of what's ahead. So I asked Peter what Fisher sees about the future that he simply does not. Here's what he had to say. Well, I don't know that he sees anything. He's just talking. I think the Fed is very reluctant to admit what a big failure their policy has been, especially ahead of the election when everybody's trying their best to make sure that Hillary Clinton becomes the next president. But if Fisher is saying that the Fed is close to its goals when it comes to economic growth, look at the last three quarters. Economic growth has averaged less than 1%. We're going to get a revision to the second quarter on Friday. We're probably going to get another downward revision. So if the Fed is simply hoping that everything just magically turns around in the third quarter, I don't know what they're looking at uh, to conclude that. I think it's just talk. And I don't think they're seriously considering a rate hike. They just don't want to admit that they're not because they want to keep up the pretense that the economy is strong enough for a rate hike without actually raising, hike, ra raising rates. Yeah, but don't they know it's dangerous to do that? I mean, a lot of people have argued that they're going to lose credibility uh, if they can't back up their rhetoric with action. So why would they do that? Well, because they always have the fail-safe that they're data-dependent, and so they don't really have to do anything because they always say we're going to act based on the data. They've never actually committed to doing anything, so they've never really uh, put themselves in a position where they ever actually have to act, and I think that's by design. But what's really amazing to me is that the Fed has any credibility left at all because I don't know why people haven't figured out this game yet. You know, let me ask you, what do you see as the most glaring threats uh, to the Fed's pro-growth prognostications, both domestically and internationally? Well, nothing that they do is actually pro-growth. Everything is anti-growth. It's all about sustaining asset bubbles and propping up overly indebted governments. But if we want real economic growth, we have to let those asset bubbles burst. We have to force governments to cut spending, not enable them to keep on borrowing and spending more, and we have to allow the economy to restructure. But the Federal Reserve's programs are specifically designed to prevent that from happening. And so they've trapped the economy in a low growth, in fact, in a really stagflationary environment. In fact, even Alan Greenspan is now warning about stagflation, and he ought to know because he helped get this party started. Yeah. One of the things that we mentioned credibility, I want to go back to that issue because we know uh, that that is one of the biggest critiques against the Fed, that uh, the Fed is promising rate increases that are ultimately abandoned last minute. Now, instead of focusing on, on a timeline of rate hikes, what is it that you think the Fed should be focusing on as a real sign that the economy is healing? Well, it's not healing. It's so far from healing because of what the Fed has done. The but Fed what should indicators acknowledge their would you mistakes. be looking at? What do you think is most important to keep an eye on? Well, obviously, you can look at GDP numbers, which are very, very low. And in fact, I think they'd be lower if they were more honest, because I think the deflator, which is used to take nominal GDP and make it real, I think it, they're artificially low because I think inflation is higher than what the government admits. But look at what's happening in the labor market. Look at the decimation of higher paying full time jobs and the proliferation of low paying part time service sector jobs. Look at how popular Bernie Sanders was in the Democratic Party. Look at Donald Trump getting the Republican nomination. This is the result of voter frustration with a lousy economy. And so the Fed is trying to take credit for economic growth when all the evidence shows that we have economic stagnation at best. Well, let me ask you about the GDP, because as you said, you believe it's going to be revised down for the second quarter. But if you look at where the third quarter is right now, where the projections for it uh, are, it's right now at 3.6 percent, according to uh, the GDP now tracker from the Atlanta Fed. Uh, what do you make of that? I mean, wouldn't a strong third quarter undermine uh, your narrative a little bit? Not really. First of all, even if we do get a strong third quarter, you have to average that quarter in with the very weak quarters from one and two. And so for the whole nine months, it's still going to be well below the Fed's objective. And then we still have to see what happens in the fourth quarter. But if you remember, every time the Atlanta Fed 
uh, uh, forecast the GDP, they always start out high, and then they have to move their number down as we get weaker and weaker data. And I think the same thing is going to happen again in the third quarter. I seriously doubt that we're going to get a number north of three. More likely, we'll get something, uh, you know, in the ones. Uh, maybe we'll get something in the twos. But if you take all three quarters again and look at them in their entirety, it is a very weak market. And that is despite interest rates being practically zero. So can you imagine what would be happening if the Fed is, had actually followed through on the rate hikes that it promised last year? Yeah, but despite the somewhat downbeat GDP numbers, I mean, you can't deny that we're, we're hearing more hawkish calls out of the Fed in general. On top of uh, Fisher's recent statements, we last week heard from New York Fed Governor Bill Dudley, who said essentially more of the same. However, on the dovish side, uh, we've got San Francisco Fed President John Williams. Last week, he made the case for a higher inflation target. What do you make of that idea? I mean, does that fix anything? No, it just makes everything worse. In fact, he advocated for higher inflation and larger government budget deficits. I mean, we had that during the Jimmy Carter years, and it didn't work out very well back then. And in fact, if you look at economic productivity, productivity growth in America for the past three quarters hasn't been this week since Jimmy Carter was president. So it seems like they want to return to those policies because we've got that kind of economic growth. But, you know, I don't think we've actually had hawkish statements. We've had a mixture of dovish and more dovish statements, even the statements that are supposedly hawkish. Again, don't commit the Fed to doing anything. All they do is hold out the possibility that there may be another rate hike. Well, so what? Anything is possible. The question is, what is probable? And nobody has said that we'll probably raise rates, only that we haven't eliminated the possibility. But the possibility is slim. But I think the more important thing, rather than whether or not the Fed raises rates again, maybe one or two more times, the, the real thing is when is the Fed going to start easing again? Because that, that's what Williams is talking about. We're going to have another round of quantitative easing because Williams is advocating for bigger government deficits that the Federal Reserve will monetize with QE. And I think rates are going to go back down to zero, regardless of whether or not they're increased before they go back down. They may even go negative. This rate hike cycle is nowhere near the magnitude that everybody believed it was going to be even if they do another hike. But I think more likely they're not. I think they're just going to talk about hiking probably until the election. And then once it's over, they can abandon the pretense that everything is fine and they can come to the rescue of the economy again. But of course, when the Fed, Fed rescues the economy, it's the equivalent of throwing a drowning man an anchor. Yeah, well, some people are saying that that, uh, that idea about raising the inflation target could come up at, at the, the symposium taking place, uh, the meeting of Fed officials at Jackson Hole. What are you expecting to hear out of uh, Chairwoman Janet Yellen? Yeah, well, she's going to talk on Friday. It's the same day we get those GDP revisions. Look, I don't expect her to veer much from the script. I think she will want, still wants to pretend that everything is okay. Uh, she still wants to congratulate uh, the Fed uh, for a job well done. She still wants to pretend uh, that uh, you know the economy is strong. So I don't know that she's going to rock that boat uh, going into you know the elections in November. So I think she's still going to pretend that the Fed might raise rates if the data uh, warrants it. But of course, the data won't warrant it, no matter what it is. That's the wiggle room uh, that the Federal Reserve has, has left itself. 